Good morning. Well, it's good evening probably where you are. Um, I mean, it's morning here. It's about half six in the morning. We're out here um, by a lovely little river, and I'm going to tell you about my favourite designers right now. I've got quite a few new designers uh, in the mix in this list. Uh, some things that you'll really enjoy, some things that you may not even expect. Some, of course, you will know. You know, you have seen some of them before. But it's all good stuff, all very, very exciting stuff. And uh, I've, I've taken you here for a very specific reason that I'll get into uh, later on in the video but it's absolutely lovely, isn't it? So let's waste no time and let's get on with my 10 favorite designers as of right now. So this list is in no particular order. This is my first selection. This is Ralph Lauren Polo Deep Blue. Did a review about this uh, very recently. This is something for my younger viewers. If you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, late teens, this is really gonna work for you. All the way from 15 to 25, this is great. Older gentlemen, you can still wear this, of course. It's, you know, there's nothing against that. It's just wonderful. But this is very, very friendly. This is very, very people-pleasing. This is something that I've really enjoyed wearing in the summertime. A lot of blokes my age and actually younger are wearing this. This seems to be a very, very popular fragrance. This is a fragrance that I smell quite a lot, actually, uh, among friends. So this is it, and good for Ralph Lauren. You know, as I said in the review, I'll say it to you now, Ralph Lauren were very stagnant for a long while, um, between the 1990s until now, essentially. So this was a big release for them. It really re invigorated the interest in Ralph Lauren and I really hope that it pushes them to keep going to go for more interesting and uh, brilliant fragrances such as this but yeah this is a blue aquatic citrus it's something that you've already kind of smelled before along with the blue tones of Blue de Chanel and Dior Sauvage Luna Rossa Carbon those sorts of things wrapped into a very tropical and light twist next one is this Le Mal Le Parfum listen I've already I've already heard it you you know, I really didn't like this, I didn't enjoy it at all, but I was wrong. I do enjoy it, I do get it. It's very, very over the top. Over the top sweetness, caramelization of a fragrance, but I like it. It's um, it's very party-ish, it's very clubbing. Of course, it is a Lamel fragrance, and that's what they were originally known for. But this has got a lot of fruits, a lot of sugar, but it also has a bit of a, a, a depth as well, a bit of wood, a bit of sort of darkened caramel smell. It's something that's really, really intrigued me, and I like it for spring and summer evenings. This is a powerhouse of a fragrance. It projects very, very long time. Um, projection longevity is solid with this, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, there's a lot going on with this. Next one is Louis Cardin's Gold. Please, um, please uh, don't mind the... Uh the fact that it's been bashed about, I've, I've traveled a lot with this fragrance. So the thing that I like about this, and what's easy to recommend about it, is that this reminds me of two absolutely brilliant fragrances in my collection that I've recommended to you many, many times over for the past half a decade, and that will be Tom Ford Noir EDT and Creed's Royal Oud. You put them together in a bit more of a creamier, streamlined, somewhat synthetic scent and you get Louis Cardin's gold. This is probably my favorite Louis Cardin that I've smelled. I've smelled Sacred, I've also smelled Ray. Um, they're good. They have a lot of different fragrances but so far so good. This is my favorite one. This would be the one that I recommend to you. Very reasonably priced, quite a low price. Um, and just something ethereal, something different. It has that grey graveyard tone from Tom Ford Noir, but it also has a bit of spice and quite a good amount of pepper mixed in as well. So this is different. This is interesting. If you're sick of usual designers, you want something a little bit different, then you should really, really check this one out. And it's a really, really good price. So there you go. And so the next fragrance is Versace uh, Oud Noir. Wonderful, wonderful Oud fragrance. Of course, it's got that Tom Ford Oud wood smell, but with a lot of uh, designer elements. A little bit medicinal in some places, but quite sugary, quite powdery. Really, really wonderful fragrance. Fantastic for springtime. Fantastic all-rounder, really. If you haven't tried this out and you want to get into Oud, but you're a little bit nervous, a little bit scared about it, then you've got to check this out. This is a lovely place, isn't it? Wonderful place. And I haven't just brought you here to talk about fragrances. No, I'm actually here to talk to you about the new science fiction short film that I'm doing called From Here to There. We're actually going to be shooting it in this location. No, seriously, this is the location. In fact, I'm going to tell you how the story goes because we've already got to £8,000. That's absolutely amazing, but we've still got £12,000 to go to raise for this film. 
But I wanted to not just tell you about the film, I wanted to show you the film. I wanted to explain it all to you. So for those of you who don't know, the film is about a young man called Casper, and he has built a teleporter. And at the very beginning of the film, he's running down there, down that corridor, and he's got a girl waiting for him right there on that bench called Ellen, who is his work colleague. Now, Casper really likes Ellen, Ellen doesn't really like Casper, but he's built a teleporter to try and win her over. He's kind of a genius, really. So he comes in and he says, I've built a teleporter. He goes over, he says, I've built a teleporter, Ellen. It's absolutely amazing. And of course, she doesn't believe him because who would? He's, he says he's built a teleporter. So she doesn't believe him. He goes down there and he sets up the teleporters. And he explains the concept behind it, which is its gravitational power with the idea of port and starboard. And both of the teleporter pods have colours. One of them is red, one of them is green, port and starboard. So she doesn't believe him. Absolutely doesn't believe him. What absolute nonsense. Until he takes a big run up, runs through the teleporter, disappears into thin air. Ellen can't believe it. So where is he gone? Well, it's just a little demonstration. He appears actually just there. And he says to Alan, do you want to try it? Let's do it. Let's, let's, I, I want to show to you, I want to, let's go somewhere. Now to get her into the swing of things, he decides to, again, just do a little jump. But Alan's nervous and you have to get a real big run up to make the teleporter work. So he runs fast, she runs slow and everything goes wrong. They fall into the quantum realm, things go mad. And so when Casper wakes up over there, um, he sort of brings himself together, thinks, my God, what, what's just happened? It all went wrong. Anyway, he hears a scream. Ellen is there in that river. And I'm not even joking. Our actress Fiona is going to actually be in that river come July if we make the funding, of course. Uh, all for your entertainment, all for your enjoyment. Uh, there's going to be quite an action scene. We've got some stunt coordinators lined up. We've got um, health and safety people ready uh, for all of that nonsense. But yeah, it's going to be very exciting. Got a great, great river scene. It's going to take a whole day, whole one day to shoot that scene. In fact, actually, quantifiably, it's going to cost three and a half grand to shoot the scene in the river where Cal Casper rescues Ellen, um, and there's going to be a lot of tomfoolery. It's going to be really, really fun and exciting. Yeah, he saves her. He, he will drag her up to that sandbank right there. Um, anyway, she's not perturbed by this. Uh, she wants to go and teleport again. And uh, he's like, well, aren't you nervous and scared about what's just happened, about everything just going wrong? And she went, no, 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 I, 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 I'm, I'm fine. I want, to, I want to go to Edinburgh. But she wants to go to Edinburgh for a very specific reason that I won't get into here. But anyway, they set up the teleporter again to go to Edinburgh. This time round, though, they do manage to run properly. Let's go. They managed to go from here to there, which is Edinburgh. No, we're actually, look, we're actually in Edinburgh now. We're on the Royal Mile, which is where Casper and Ellen will go to. And uh, yeah, so they come here. I won't tell you too much about what happens here, you know, spoilers and that. But you know, as soon as we are here in sunny Edinburgh, and it's a beautiful, sunny but cold day, I think I should talk about my next fragrance here. This is Eau Sauvage Parfum by Christian Dior. This is perfect for this kind of day and in this kind of city. A very, very beautiful and classic and sophisticated city. A wonderful Neroli bite with this fragrance. An absolute gentleman's classic, in my opinion. Wonderful, wonderful scent. Um, does really, really well right now in the springtime, definitely. Um, when it's sunny, but not too warm, not too hot. This isn't as powerful as it used to be. Um, about five years ago, this was an absolute powerhouse. I put this on, uh, it's fine, it's nice, it's strong, but it's not as strong as I wish it was. But it's okay. So yes, wonderful scent, beautiful, beautiful city. But I think that to finish this video, let's go back to where we started. Next one on my list is this. This is Spice Bomb Infrared by Victor and Rolf. A few of you have asked me about this fragrance. Is it any good? Is it, is it not good? It's great. It is the Spice Bomb. It's exactly what I wanted. It's the Spice Bomb DNA, but warmer, redder, kind of like some red berries in there. Quite straightforward, actually. Very simple. Very simple idea. You know, I still prefer Extreme. I think that's great, but I prefer this to the original Spice Bomb. I've said a few times before that I think that Spice Bomb, the original, is quite cold. It's quite just sort of lurid and um, very uninviting. This is what I wanted out of Spice Bomb. This warms me up. And this is also gonna be great in the springtime. I think that this kind of weather, it's really quite uh, 
quite colder than we expected this morning. Um, this is going to be perfect for that. In fact, I'm considering having this as my scent of the day today because it just really suits the weather um, completely. So I think I'll just actually go for it. But no, this is great. This is really nice. And I do enjoy, do enjoy the cinnamon berry smell. I'll tell you what it's a bit like. It's a bit like um, Pure Excess actually by Paco Rabanne. But I think that overall, I prefer this one. So yes, I would highly recommend it. Next one is this, Hugo Boss, The Scent, Le Parfum. Absolutes great, Private Accords fantastic. They're on two different ends of the spectrum. In fact, Absolute is in the middle. Private Accord is that bitter chocolate coffee. This is the other end of the spectrum where it's pure fruit. This is Manaka fruit and it's Manaka fruit for days. Um, really strong fruit punch accord bit of alcohol in there as well and goes with the woodsy tone as well of the scent DNA that we're all very familiar with. Get him then. Good morning. Come on Tess. Tess, come on, out. Good girl. Tess was the star of the show right there really to be honest. Oh just uh, just shooting videos, just shooting fragrance reviews, things like that. This next one is Gucci Guilty Parfum. There's all the parfums going on at the moment, isn't there? Le Parfum, Parfum, all that good stuff. It's essentially Gucci Guilty DT. It's all the Gucci Guilty stuff that you've ever smelt before. But again, just spiced up, just turned up. And with a bit of an blood orange at the beginning. What I'm going to say to you is this. If you've got the EDT or the EDP, this might not really be necessary for you. I only bought this because I don't actually have a Gucci Guilty apart from Gucci Guilty Absolute but that's a very very different fragrance. But if you don't have a Gucci Guilty or you've run out and you just want a sort of a bit of a transition up, bit of a, an evolution up, then this could really work for you. And finally, you know, I speak about a lot of Chanel fragrances on this uh, this channel. Uh, Blue, de pa Blue de Chanel, Parfum, Allure Homme, Allure Homme Sport, all that good stuff. Let's give some love to Allure Homme Edition Blanche. Wonderful creamy cheesecake, cream pie, cream, creamy sponge cake, all that kind of stuff rolled into one. Wonderful. If you're living in a hot climate, my friend, if you're lucky enough, should I say, to live in a hot climate, and you've got a nice beach and there's sunshine and it's hot weather, do yourself a favor, try this out, get this. And finally, not really much of a surprise, Sunset Riot by All Saints. I've already talked about this, need I say more, Baccarat Rouge 540 DNA, absolutely great, wonderful stuff. Um, candy floss and vanilla and lots and lots of fun. All the other fragrance reviewers, they're making fragrances of course and they're asking you to contribute to fragrances. I don't feel that this channel has been working up to a fragrance. I feel that this channel has actually been working up to a film, to a short film that we can all make together and we can all contribute together. There's tons of different rewards on the Kickstarter. Let me just put it this way. If all of you watching right now, even you lurkers, you lurkers who just watch my videos, you don't comment, you sometimes leave a like, I, I get that, I respect you. But if all of you watching this, if, if even 2,000 of you, which I think that this video will get more than 2,000 views, if 2,000 of you gave £10 to this Kickstarter, it would be over, it would be funded in minutes. If 4,000 of you gave £5, it would be over in minutes. Please do not underestimate the power that you have. Please do not underestimate the community and the unity that the Fragrance Apprentice has built up for so many years. I want this film to be made not just for me, but also for you, and also for the fact that we're going to be funding over 50 new jobs in the creative sector if this film gets made. It's such an exciting thing. There's so many visual effects, so many great ideas, so many great people working on this. Please. If you've ever wanted to support me, you could do so much better. You can support over 50 new jobs, a great new film, and just a great fun experience. Tons of rewards on the Kickstarter, 35 pounds, and you will be put on the credits of special thanks. Um, but if you go all the way to a grand, and some of you I know can do this, if you put a grand towards the Kickstarter, I will drive you to the premiere. That's not a joke. I've got it all set up. There's nine available slots for that, by the way. Nine of you can get driven to the actual premiere by yours truly. So look into it. Thank you so much in advance. Let's go make a movie. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the list. Hope that you got something out of it. I'm The Fragrance Apprentice, and I'll see you soon.